Girls, what time is it? We are in a different truck this time. Thanks, good friend Steven. And uh, he let me borrow his Chevy Silverado 1500. I uh, wanted to try out a different truck to uh, see what it was like in this particular vehicle pulling our trailer. Since we don't have our Tesla, we don't have the center screen navigation, but we can look here on my phone and this is where we're headed. We're up here in the Provo area right now and we're going down to near Moab to Goblin Valley. Let's get started. We purchased our trailer three months ago and it's been under this cover. And so we wanted to take it out to try it with all of the default things that it came with so that we would know what it's like before we start making modifications. The red lines and markers on this map indicate all our Utah adventures I've made videos about here on my YouTube channel, most of which are in our Tesla Model S. I'll include a card above to the playlist with all these Utah Tesla adventures. Today's trip is the red line going from near Provo down to Goblin Valley over here. Our first stop on the trip down was to gas up the truck here in Green River. Then we continued on to Goblin Valley, except we didn't camp in the official campground of Goblin Valley here. Instead, we continued on past into the BLM land west of Goblin Valley where there are no services, but it's free and amazing. We were camped here for two nights and one of the day adventures was hiking Little Wild Horse Canyon, just a couple miles drive down the highway over here. This is a beautiful hike with lots of hiking in slot canyons. It can be hiked as an eight mile loop going up Little Wild Horse Canyon and coming down Bell Canyon. Jessica and I knew we wouldn't be hiking the entire loop though because it's a bit too long of a hike for our kids at this point, but we will likely someday. On this hike we got to about here to the marker there on the left. Then we hiked back out the way we came in. We all had lots of fun exploring the rock formations, which you will see in the second half because this will be a two-part series trip. When we purchased our RV three months ago, we picked it up from Eastern Washington and we used a Dodge Ram 1500 and that was a 2015 model. And so that was a half ton truck and this Chevy Silverado 1500 is also a half ton truck and it happens to also be a 2015 model. So it was definitely interesting to drive the RV with two very similar trucks and uh, just from different manufacturers and get a feeling for uh, the difference between them. And ultimately they were much the same, but I do feel like the Chevy Silverado maybe pulled just a little bit better. Ultimately, we're going to be pulling our RV with our Tesla Cybertruck once we are able to get it. And so that will be a three quarter ton truck is what is rumored. And, and so I'm definitely interested in seeing the comparison between these other trucks that I'm using to tow the RV with now and versus the Cybertruck once we get it. And I will definitely be making videos about that comparison. This first segment of drive took two hours and 36 minutes about and was about 153 miles. We've been driving for a couple of hours and right now we're in Green River, Utah. So we've uh, we've driven almost the whole way to Goblin Valley and we're just going to gas up here. Looking down at the, the truck, you can see it's estimating that we have 61 miles remaining uh, and we have we went completely full to just below uh, a quarter of a tank right there. So we're going to gas up and then continue on our way. How has the drive been, girls? Good. Yeah. What have you been doing? I'm just You've been coloring and listening to a book on tape? Mm hmm Great. I'm eating a banana. I see that. <laughs> I want a banana. All right, let's get gassed up and get back on the road. This first fill up was 19.61 gallons, which cost a total of $54.10 because it was $2.75 per gallon. It was definitely a little bit of sticker shock seeing that price considering that we've been driving around for nearly two years now without having to uh, pay for any fuel for our Tesla Model S because we have free supercharging. Uh, but it is useful data to be gathering and then once we have our Cybertruck I'll definitely be comparing the price of towing our RV around with it versus these gasoline trucks. Obviously this won't be a complete apples to apples comparison because the Cybertruck being a three quarter ton truck having more towing capacity, etc. exceeds what these were originally designed for, but I'm working with what I have available to me. We're two miles away from where we're headed and that cliff face straight ahead is where we're going. It looks like there's already some trailers there, but we'll see if we can find a spot. We were all excited to be able to see this beautiful scenery as we approached our campsite or at least I hoped to be our campsite. Because this is BLM land, there are no services, there are no reservations, and I really wasn't sure what to expect as far as like how many available spots there would be to camp in 
versus how many people were already there. So I was definitely grateful when we arrived and found plenty of spots available. And because this isn't a campground with established spots, I mean, technically, if, if all the nice spots were taken, we could have just camped out in the open area. So I wasn't overly concerned, but I was hopeful that we would find a cool spot. All right, we've arrived. We just need to drive in to where we can camp. I, mean, I feel like we could go on the other side of that guy. Mom, that is that little... close enough? We may have to. I just rode my one wheel over to where there are a couple of campsites to make sure I knew where I was headed scoping it out and I think I found a spot that'll work for us. So we're gonna head over there and park. Hey Lucy, are you having fun? Yeah. All right, let's go park. Lucy and I are exploring to see if there are any better camping options. I mean, with the place we found, it works pretty good, I think, but I just exploring before we get too settled. Here's a, another fire pit. And this is kind of a more open area and it's pretty uneven here, so we'd have to do a lot of leveling of the trailer, I think. Hey, Lucy. She immediately went climbing. But the view from here is pretty awesome. Looks out across this valley. And where we're currently located is right there in the middle of the screen. And I think we're gonna stay there probably. Nope, we didn't stay there. We totally found a way better spot after Lucy and I continued searching and this is our new found location. Pivot! Pivot! This was a really cool alcove we had found and we wanted to turn the trailer as much as possible so that we were kind of across the entrance, which we generally succeeded at. And so once we got the trailer uh, located, then we got it leveled and then we started to explore the surroundings. It's a good thing that Jessica thought to bring the sand toys because this whole area was just a big sand pile and you can see the kids got to work right away making their own customized sand pit. They also immediately set to work exploring our surroundings and climbing up on the cliff faces in the area which are just amazingly beautiful. And then we jumped on our bicycles and we were able to explore an even larger area. Lydia, where are you? Did you find a cool alcove? Great. Lydia's climbing here, and then Lucy is way over there in that little alcove. Let's go over there. <laughs> hey, Lucy. Hi, Dad. How did you get all the way up here? Fine. Good climbing. Is this fun? Mm -hmm. Do you like Goblin Valley? Yeah. We're not even at Goblin Valley yet. <laughs> this is near Goblin Valley. We're not at Goblin Valley? But we'll go see it shortly. Oh, here's our view from up here. The part of the valley we can see. So far I'm very pleased with this location. It's really cool. And we have our own little private alcove here. We have our own fire pit here, right next to the trailer. And we brought some firewood. We've... Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. This is how we positioned the trailer in the entrance of this alcove. It's a lot larger open area right here and we don't need that large of an area, so we put the trailer back here and then turned it a little bit so that it kind of blocks the entrance to our little private alcove. I'm in the trailer right now, and I just wanted to check on the status of the batteries. We have two lead acid batteries in this trailer. When we first arrived here, they were at about 100%. I didn't check specifically, but I know they were 100% when we left home. They're now down to 88%, but they were down to 80 a few minutes ago, and so the voltage has been going back up. I think after we had slid the slide out, out and used the stabilizer jacks. So we'll see what this gets up to, but I'm really curious to see how our one 170 watt panel performs on the roof of this RV while we're here. So that's gonna be kind of one of the tests to see how well this system works that is already in the trailer. Now, one thing I have noticed about the solar panel and the way they installed it is they really didn't do a very good job. Specifically, 
they mounted it right next to the TV antenna. Let me go up there and I'll show you. Here's the roof of the RV. And look at this. It's like right there. The Right now, it actually overhangs. If we move this a little bit, you can see that's pretty much per vertically right on the edge of the panel, which I find to just be reprehensible because this casts a shadow on the panel pretty consistently. At least it does at our house. We'll see how it does in this location. But it also has the the, the air conditioner right there. So there's going to be shadows cast on this panel pretty consistently unless it's like high noon, summertime, and the sun is coming from the straight down. Lucy is all the way up there on the side of that white slope. Right there. Hi Lucy! First activity of the day. The girls came straight out and wanted to dig in the sand. <laughs> Are you having fun girls? Yeah! Great. Yeah, that is a cool bucket. We are out on a bike ride right now exploring our area. This is what the view looks like. We just barely left where our RV is. Hey, Lydia. Hi. It's definitely a lot more windy and out here than it is in our alcove. <laughs> it's kind of bumpy, huh? <laughs> Lydia, what are you doing? You're writing your name in the dirt? Where did you get that? <laughs> so far over there. Yeah, it was uh, an old tent spot someone left behind one of their stakes, huh? Yeah, that's what it is. We rode our bikes way over here, and there's some people camping over here to the left. Uh, but there's this deep alcove here past them. It's got these really cool rocks to climb on. I love going down. I'm glad you do, Lydia. We came all the way up here, and the girls climbed all the way up here. Good climbing. And there's the top of the wall up there. This trip in general is our opportunity to test all of the systems on board our RV for the first time and to make sure that they all work and stuff. For dinner today, we decided to bring some pizza. This is pizza that still needs to get baked. And we have successfully lit the oven. This is a propane powered oven. So if you look down in here, you can see the flames going. So we're gonna get the oven heated up and then we'll cook our pizza and see how well that works. What do you think? Fingers crossed. Is this the first time you've ever used a propane oven? Yeah. Well, yeah, same here. Yeah. Same for me. So we'll see how that works. Out here, the girls are playing with the dirt. <laughs> you girls having fun? Mm -hmm, yeah. All right, the pizza is done enough, but you can see that the propane oven didn't do amazing. It's a little bit too hot right there in the center and the bottom. So yeah, it cooked the pizza, but it kind of overcooked and uh, didn't do it evenly. Are you girls excited? Yeah! Alright, let's eat. For the next pizza, I moved the tray up one level. It was down here before. I moved it up to try to give it some distance from this heat because that's where the burner is down here. And that was obviously a little too hot. The second like pizza is done, and good news, it's not burned. So moving it up a layer worked on the oven. Look at this view out this window. Isn't that cool? <laughs> Girls, what are we doing now? Since our RV has a freezer, we brought some ice cream to test it out. And the I, I would say that the ice cream is still quite solid. So, it works. Pizza and ice cream! Yeah! And then, we're going to watch a movie. And the movie that we're going to watch 
is Galaxy Quest, which part of it was filmed here in Goblin Valley. Isn't that exciting? And Mom's telling us a story. So one time he told a lie that his daughter could spin straw into gold. The girls finished up eating their ice cream cones at the table, and then we changed the dinette to be a bed so they can continue watching the movie. And this is the part of Galaxy Quest where they land in Goblin Valley. That's where we are right now. Hey, son of a it's an alien planet! Is there air? You don't know! <gasps> that we're not in Goblin Valley where right now we're in the RV. <laughs> You're right, Clara. Doesn't that look cool? That's where we're going tomorrow. Are you girls excited to see Goblin Valley tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah? You're excited? Yeah. <laughs> the movie's done. Girls, what did you think of Galaxy Quest? Yeah. Are you ready for bed? I know what the other scary. It was a little bit scary. Yeah. Yeah, we skipped some scary parts, huh? <laughs> Mom covered my eyes a lot. <laughs> All right, let's go to bed. All right, everyone's going to bed now. We got Lucy up here on the top bunk. Are you ready to go to bed, Lucy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> In the middle bunk, we have Lydia. Hi, Lydia. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and down here on the bottom bunk, we have Clara back there in the corner. Good night, girls. Good night. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> See you in the morning. See you in the morning. It is now 9 p.m. and the whole evening we've doing, been doing uh, regular things that we wanted to do like watching a movie and having lights on and uh, stuff like that. So I've been curious to see how well the battery uh, would perform here. We have two lead acid batteries hooked up in parallel. And so looking here at the readout, it's showing that we are at 84%. Now the thing is I've been seeing this move a lot. It has been as low as 69% and as high as 90% and it just kind of moves around seemingly kind of randomly. So that's kind of interesting. So in the morning, we'll check and see where it's at, but we're going to bed at 84% on the battery. Something else worth mentioning is it's down to 64 degrees in here going to bed, which actually feels just fine. And so in the morning, we will see how uh, cold it has gotten down to here inside the RV. We may end up needing to use the furnace in the morning to uh, take the chill off. Our first day was a big success. It certainly changes the dynamic a lot having an RV. It makes things a lot easier and more comfortable than the tent camping we're used to. I'm sure I'll do plenty of tent camping in the future, but it's a lot of fun to learn this new way of going on adventures. It opens up all the seasons to camping, which reduces the competition for good camping locations like this one. And this was an awesome camping location the next morning and it got down to 44 degrees inside here and if we look outside outside it got to about 35 degrees I'm gonna turn on the furnace and bring up the temperature of the RV a bit hey girls Good morning. Good morning. How did you sleep, girls? <laughs> yeah, I just turned on the heater. The uh, battery is down to 64%, so it did not go down too badly overnight. And also, if we look at this, you can see that there's just a little bit of solar generation starting to happen right now. Lydia, what did you find? A vent. A vent? Is it blowing lots of really warm air? Yeah. <laughs> The heater's been on for about 20 minutes and we're up to 54 degrees and it's feeling quite a bit warmer than that even. Hey girls! Lucy, what do you see out the window? Um, the track? Let's see. Oh, look at that cool view. I climbed that mountain over there covered in white. Yeah. Yesterday. You were a good climber. I climbed to the tippy top. <laughs> yes, you did. Clara, what are you excited for today? <laughs> what do you want to do today, Clara? Eat. Eat. <laughs> now, one thing I would point out about this RV is that the windows are prone to fogging up, and uh, obviously that's just normal moisture. But 
I'm hopeful that once we get our heat pump mini split going that that'll keep the moisture down so it doesn't do this. But it's great to wake up to this view. How was your breakfast? And you're really warm in here, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Thank goodness for that furnace, because it was really cold when we woke up, huh? Uh -huh. It's now been about half an hour, and we're up to 62 degrees. And over here, we used the propane stove to heat up the hot water for the oatmeal. The moisture buildup on the windows was there before we started boiling water in the morning, even though we do have dual pane windows. Uh, it was quite cold outside, of course, though. So anyway, after we ate breakfast, we then uh, got the girls ready for uh, the adventure and then we headed out to explore Goblin Valley. Hey girls, where are we going? Uh, Goblin Valley. Yeah! Our trailer is back there through the window. I don't know if you can see it, but we are just taking off and we're going to head over to Goblin Valley. The drive to Goblin Valley was just a short 17 minutes or 4.9 miles. And right there in the center of the screen is the visitor center entrance area and then you drive up to the actual Goblin Valley that is in there in the top right corner of the screen. And off to the right where you see some buildings, that is the edge of the campground that is part of Goblin Valley State Park. And we're at the Goblin Valley Visitor Center and that's the entrance and then over in that direction is the actual valley. Here we are approaching the actual Goblin Valley. Or as and they we're... call it, Valley of Goblins. Oh right, yeah the signs have been saying Valley of Goblins. There's a few other people here. And there is Goblin Valley. Awesome. Can we go walk around, see if we find some goblins? Yeah. Girls, are you excited? All right, let's go check it out. Clara's ready to go. Whoa! <laughs> what do you see, girls? Awesome thing. You see any little monsters? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, Clara, say cheese. Cheese! Lydia, where are you? What do you think of the view, girls? Awesome. Are you getting tired, Lydia? Lay down. What did you find, Lucy? A little seat. A little seat? Mm -hmm. That's perfect. And it's in the shade, too. Mm -hmm. I can see the other view. Yeah. Should we go catch up with them? Go, girls! Good job climbing. Good job, girls. Ah, go, Lucy. Come on, Clara, you can do it. Yay!
There you are. Is this so cool? Yeah. Good climbing, Lucy. Oh, okay. Oh, hey, Lydia. Claire, did you fall asleep? <laughs> there she is. <laughs> Clara, what did you find? A little bad. We've now successfully explored across the entire Goblin Valley. And off there in the distance right there is the parking lot. And we're on the opposite side. <laughs> Did a goblin get Clara? Hey girls, where are we going now? Back to the truck and then the trailer. It's kind of interesting how Goblin Valley ends. Over here you've got this kind of just regular desert mountainside and then a big open empty space for quite a bit distance and then it gets into all of the crazy rock formations. We've finished exploring the Goblin Valley and we are back at the truck here and it turns out that this is the only place in the whole area that has cell reception. Not that I really need cell reception, but I went ahead and checked some things and look at this. It turns out that we are now at 750 subscribers on my channel. Did you guys have fun seeing the Valley of Goblins? Uh, and Dad saw two goblins. Dad, your... Dad saw two goblins? What was your favorite part? <laughs> okay. I saw Lucy and Claire dolphins. Was it worth coming all the way here to see that? Uh-huh. I agree. What do you want to do when we get back to the trailer? Eat unicorn rainbow ice cream. Oh, Eat are you sure you don't want to are you sure you don't want to take a nap? Yeah. Or we or we could take a nap. No. Can can when when we get back to the trailer, can we give marshmallows and no. <laughs> Get marshmallows and throw them in the fire? Burn them in the fire. Burn them in the fire. <laughs> we'll do that tonight, maybe after dinner. Okay. We're back to the trailer, and the first thing the girls wanted was their unicorn sparkle ice cream. <laughs> you excited? After this snack of ice cream, we hung out in the sand and enjoyed the ambiance. The kids had a ton of fun digging in the sand, and I did a little bit of maintenance lubricating the hinges on the doors of the lance. I also took advantage of the opportunity of the kids having fun in the sand to uh, do a little bit more testing in the RV of the electrical system, and so I'll give you a little bit of an insight into that. Here it's showing 13 volts. Over here on a different inverter, it is showing 13 volts and then here is a kilowatt type meter and it's showing 114 volts because it's going through the inverter and so now I'm going to come down here and plug in the one wheel and it's starting to charge which we can see over here it shows there the plug that's plugged in it shows one hour it's at 45 percent come back over here and its voltage is dropped down to 106 volts which is pretty low and it's pulling 745 milliamps or 78 watts and then if you look here down on this inverter it's showing 10.2 volts up here it is showing 105 volts over here 12.5 volts oh it's getting 1.2 amps from the solar right now and it's showing that the battery is at 90 percent so it really just doesn't hold its voltage very well at all. As a point of re for reference to show you what the batteries are that we have, we have a compartment over here on the front of the trailer. And these are the lead acid batteries. So it shows it's a deep cycle type battery, pretty standard. Now these batteries are uh, two lead acid batteries connected in parallel. And they are the original batteries that came with the trailer, at least when we bought it you know, a few months ago. Um, probably original from the manufacturer, I'm guessing and uh, this trailer is two years old now so i don't know how much degradation they've gone through 
Um, but they definitely do not keep the voltage up very well. And that's, I think, the lead acid technology. That's just not great. I'm planning on upgrading this system anyway, so that shouldn't be a big deal. Uh, once we get all of our lithium batteries in here and high-end inverters, this will be nothing. Here's an interesting observation, or maybe a little geeky observation. But if you look here at the solar, you can see it's now outputting 7.2 amps. And earlier it was like 2.5 or 3 amps. And earlier I tried plugging in my uh, 300 watt inverter here into the uh, 12 volt uh, DC power socket there. And then I plugged in my one wheel and it was just beeping and would not do it. But now it's not beeping. And when I look over here on the app, it shows that it is charging successfully. So it appears that once we are getting enough sun that it's putting a whole bunch of more extra power into the rig that it is now able to charge a higher wattage appliance like the one wheel charger. Um, earlier it was able to charge my drone batteries as well um, as the amperage was ramping up so I'm not totally sure about that but that's just an interesting takeaway that I'm finding that the anemic electrical system on board this RV does need that sun input in order to be able to charge a heavier draw. What are we having for dinner? Salad. Taco salad. Taco salad. Taco salad. Whoa. It's fire time. We lit the fire with one of these fire fast rods. It has manganese here on the back side, or magnesium. And then it has the ferro rod here in the front part of it. And then we had some paper that we lit it with. And now we're burning our wood. And then the girls are using these uh, blow sticks here. They're they collapse down into these little holders that big right there this whole thing collapses down just like that but then you pull it out and then you can blow with your mouth just like lydia's doing here and you get the embers going good job getting that fire going girls my forehead is burning <laughs> What are we having, girls? Marshmallows. Marshmallows on the fire that we just lit. Yeah. With our fire fast ferro rods. You can see it right here. Fire fast. This is the, uh, I don't remember what it's called, but this is the, the larger one. And then this is a smaller one. It's called the Firefly. And it was fairly fast, especially when it comes to just using ferro rods. You know, flint and steel in general. Oh, Lydia, it's going to start on fire. Blow on it. Blow. Hey, girls, what do you think of this trip so far? Do you love it? This is a really fun place, huh? This really was a perfect first experience, taking our travel trailer out for the first time. After a great dinner, we roasted or burned for some their marshmallows and enjoyed the ambiance. As the sun set, it got cold, so we went inside and got the kids to bed, and it was their bedtime anyway. This trip was in early March, and so the weather is quite warm during the day, but very cold at night as well. And it's great to be able to be in the comfort of the RV with the temperature swings and not be worried about the weather. Hey girls, what did you just do? Did you all just take a shower for the first time in the RV? Great. It was, was the, the first, first time. time taking a shower in the RV. And what are you doing now? Um, watching a drone video. Yeah. We are watching a video that I took on the drone today of where we're located here on the BLM land near Goblin yeah. Valley. And I'll, I'll show some of this on the screen at full quality. This is obviously just on the TV, but I wanted to show how we did this. So uh, down here I have a laptop that has a um, USB-C out. It's a Thunderbolt port that's going into this um, port replicator that has an HDMI port on it right there. That HDMI cable is then coming up here into the back of the TV. It is a port for, well, alternative inputs. And it's that one right there on the bottom. So now by selecting that HDMI port on the TV, we are able to play things that we've either just recorded today or we can play uh, movies from my laptop or any content that I want to display from the screen of the laptop, which is right here, now is mirrored up on the TV. So that's kind of fun. That we can review our footage or watch movies and it really opens up a whole new world of possibilities of things that we can display here on the screen. Hey, look, 
You Who's are that at the table? table? Is that you guys? Yeah. Two little girls. <laughs> not me. That's not you? <laughs> it looks like you. <laughs> You're going like this? <laughs> In the second video of this trip, which I'll add a card to above, we explored the nearby slot canyon called Little Wild Horse Canyon, which is a fun hike with super beautiful scenery. Then we pack up and drive all the way back home. Feel free to like this video and make sure to subscribe if you're not already to get automatically notified when I publish the next video.